Do we want to just leave that open? That's like probably like um, definite air infiltration. Yeah, we should probably plug it up just with the siding and then work above that so that the run is. Yeah. Yeah, we should probably just do that. Okay. So as we butt up that plywood to the bottom strip, um, cut a thin strip for below that. Yeah. And as far as two by eights, two by eights we have um, in the wood repository. I'm not sure we have two by eights out there, but we do have. There's only one. one. I saw these four. Mm -hmm. There might only be one, but there might be one. Yeah. And then for these planks, we've got one buys. Uh, also in the wood repository. But yeah, okay. That's a job in itself. Now, if we go all the way to the back. Katrina, are you still there? Question is, how far back do we go here? Yes, probably right up to the wall. Here we trim this up later with what? With probably vertical one bys, because that needs to get trimmed up here so to hide all of this. Um, yeah, how do we trim that up? Katarina, suggestions? We'll worry about that later, but, but you want to be clear that somehow we do trim this up, so if these pieces of wood are sticking out here... How far are we sticking out right now? Oh, uh, we'll have to measure that. Yeah, so if we put the landing on there, the landing could serve as a support for, for one of these last ones, but all this uh, stair shape here, we want to close that up with, I mean, probably just cut, we could either do like a regular siding, just cut a piece mm -hmm. exactly to that, or just strip boards, like that. Yeah, I've heard of um, strip boards would look nice. Yeah, so I think that's, that's tractable there, yeah, like the vertical to match this surface here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, for, so if we're putting the panel up for that wall, mm -hmm. that corner, does it have any electric cutouts? Or no, I think, from the map? I think we'll save, save that. I don't think so because, um, well, let's see, let's look at, uh, yeah, let's see. take a look at. There's a lot going on in that corner. is useful. Now, how do we do that? So now that I think about the whole utility, why I wanted a board down there is like more like for weather infiltration, like wind. Um, but the utility channel, the way it's designed, it's always got the insulation on the inside and then the wires are in front of it. It's not, it's not covered up outside of the final Final trim, final uh, final closure. Uh, so I think by that design, if we want to put that box in, then uh, we leave the bottom open like everywhere else, and then we do a specialized 
closure, whether it's the off the shelf or or similar to what we're doing already. So yeah, there's so the only consideration, yes, there is an outlet in this one. And then what about those two? Uh, the these ones, are, these ones were actually um, like switches. This is more. I, I think this was in this wall here. Okay. Because uh, you want to have a switch for a light. Let's see the switch for a light bottom and top of the stairs. So that was for. Well, I got so many of those switches. Those switches might have been for lights here, some other lights, but this one three-way. Ah, oh man, we got fancy there. That's a that three there stands for a three-way switch, which would mm -hmm. oh yeah, for bottom and top of the stairway. Yeah. Okay, three-way switch there. But that's that's in this wall. Yep. I think this one here. What is that one for? Not clear about this one. <clears throat> but if it is there, you can cut it out <clears throat> with the the reciprocating tool. Yeah. Um, maybe leave that one. But this this 15 amp outlet there, I think that's convenient. Yeah. Leave that. Um. Yeah. Do that one. But the other panel, no, just this one. I'm not sure where that is. We can cut it out later. But yeah, do this one panel. Uh, so that's a uh, cut out at the regular height, just like all the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like really. I think this this part is the tricky part where we're doing the panels and electrical, and that that's that will like after this prototype we'll have a good idea, but. Right now we're kind of like figuring it out, so this this is this takes a little time. Um, yeah, but it will become much more obvious once you, we build it and see it in real life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Getting those panels in will take <coughs> that'll take an hour. The two panels on the corner. We do three panels. We gotta do. Uh, oh, that one is missing panels. there too. It's just the blue, right? Yeah, I guess it's just the blue panels. That's okay. Have, that shouldn't be too bad. So yep. we have to cut the blue one down to size, but the the one with the outlet is a full size. No, nope, that's short. Yeah, the both. They're both short. Both short. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. that um, as far as the land so there's uh, could be a couple of teams there if uh, Penny you want to work on the landing part or is that mm -hmm. did you kind of fo follow it or not really You're talking about taking it down. no this thing to build it yeah we're gonna have to measure uh, basically measure so that we go down to the last it, it starts at the at the right height for the first tread to be the, the right thing. We need to get the exact number for what that height needs to be, but we're we're looking like we're at 8.75 inches, which would mean a 2 by 8, a spacer, and then one bys to get to a 8.75 total. Uh, so I should document that. Let me just make a note here. So the 
looks like. And we can verify that with its 8.75 inch tall landing equals 2 by 8 plus 3 quarter spacer plus 1 by 4s to get to that height about. Um, quarter spacer and we might need a smaller space like if it's yeah you just got to measure make sure that all fits uh, and possibly shim it and uh, trim next to the ground I guess well if we trim up wh whatever happens on the landing the front of it will be trimmed so it's all it's, any kind of uh, shim shimming is going to disappear okay. there so mm -hmm. for that three quarter spacer, can we just you know we build the box and then we all look at the bottom side and lay down like get one by four to go around the border? Is that three quarter spacer would do that or three quarter plywood, whichever. One three quarter plywood, okay. Yeah. yeah, a one by one by would do it. So would uh plywood three quarters. If it's five eighths then uh the wall panels they're five eighths. Okay. So if it's half it's Half plywood might have some, well, definitely in the storage. Yeah, and then so this last, so the point is we need to maintain this uh, last. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you. Yeah, the spacer has to be a one by because the that edge is going to show, and the edge of plywood is not really like presentable. Yeah, but we probably trim it up now. Trim the at front of the. Well, if you use the one by, you don't need to trim it up. You put it at the bottom, and it's kind of like a little effect there. If you use plywood, then you're creating more complications for finishing. Okay. We're gonna have shims, probably shims at the bottom, like to get it exactly level, or maybe not. Maybe we. Oh. Uh, maybe not. Maybe maybe do it. Uh, I mean, what the difference is gonna be like an eighth of an inch or up to a quarter. I mean, that's something we might live with, or. And just put it straight on the ground, no, no shims. But we'll I think see, we'll, we'll I think we'll have to we'll, we'll have to see, yeah, we'll yeah. See. But I think that like think about using a one by because if we can get away without shims, then that will be finished. We don't have to then put something else, and it just gets more and more complicated. So use the a one by if you can. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, So rise rises still. Well, let me say we have sixteen point five to go, sixteen point five inches. So you might have custom channel here, custom electrical channel, custom utility channel here. trimming up the front of the stairs that will get trimmed up but up to yeah up to the landing here where but there's gonna be a step in the trim so we probably have to trim everything there don't we Katarina we might have to put on like an extra trim board in front of this to, to get even with this level of trim here otherwise it'll be like a little step um, yeah but we can figure that out Probably later on. I think I have to see it. I have to see it in real life. This is the kind of like complex detail. Um, right. 
And also, like, sometimes things look complicated in CAD, but in real life, they're, like, simpler. Um, I'll, I'll take a look later today, yeah? yeah? And we'll talk about it. Okay. Yep. All right. I was just thinking, uh, I don't want to complicate it, but like, if we're trimming around the treads, yeah, I don't make those treads custom, making the same. Yeah, okay. I'll worry about the final trim later. Um, custom electric trim, so we just have to cover the walls. So cover, well, cover wall only to blocking, right? This blocking here. Right, that's what we said, we're not gonna yeah. put. So that's blocking. So one by fours, prior to finishing, we're gonna plane this stuff. We'll probably run through the planer, right? We got a little planer. Do you wanna bring out the planer, Katarina? We've got, we've got a bunch of one by fours in the, in the storage, but yeah, planing would be the right thing to do if you wanna look at really nice, make it look really nice, right? Yeah, uh, the, what we do. the the planer is. I think it. I think it makes more sense to bring the wood to the planer, considering how heavy it is, and it's already on my table, so it's ready to use. Okay. Uh, the, so table, up, the, so the table. The table is here. Yeah. Huh? So cut the one bys. One, one by fours. To size. Okay. Uh, so here, here's the thing. The planer kind of leaves a mark on the edge of the boards, like a few inches from the end. So it would be better to cut them longer so then we can cut off that defect. Wait, wait, which end? The end of both ends? What's the question? Well, one end is I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Sorry, I, no. it, it leaves a defect on one end or both ends? Well, it depends. It leaves a defect on the last, when you feed it into the planer, it's the end that is planed last. So if, if you send the board always in the same direction, it would only be on one side. If you don't flip the board around, it'll be on one side, yeah. All right. How much Which might how much end up being hidden out? under the step. Oh, Say yeah, that again? Well, oh yeah, well that's going to get hidden under the step, so don't worry about it. Right. Okay, so forget about that part. So maybe it it's to size. not. Yeah. Okay. Mhm. Mm um, also, I don't have rollers, so we have to kind of like feed it. Man, I mean, you know, I can get it. We gotta kind of like be careful about it. But the rollers would probably help with that defect, though it always happens. The manufacturer says that's just how it is. Mhm. Mm All right. So if we get to that, we'll, yeah, we can plane it. Mhm. Mm Okay. Yeah, it will. It will make them brand new. They'll look great. Mm-hmm. And right now they're in the old woodshed around the, that area. There's a it's in piles over there, so we have to extract it. Extract one by. Yeah. From the the covered shed where all that wood is kind of outside there. That's that's where the one by fours would live. Do we want to use like one by sixes or? What are we gonna, no, we only use one by fours, right? They look really nice. Well, the reason why we didn't use one by sixes is because they're considerably more, when we're making a floor, they're considerably more expensive than one by four, but they look equally good. So whatever you have, either one will work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have one by fours. I'm not sure about one by, enough one by six. Okay. 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 All right. Now, if someone doesn't have a planer, then the, what what do people do? They do just sand the 
the wood to make it really nice. Yeah. Yes, that's that's. I mean, no one really uses like no one does what we do, which is like to take just like some regular construction grade soft wood and use it as a floor. Um, but if you didn't have a planer, you'd do what I did with this floor, which is I sanded it. Yeah. But then you have to. But stain also, it. like you can, you can. Mm -hmm. You stain it and and finish it in place, or when you make the boards, yeah, you gotta stain it. Okay, so what about the stain? Well, you know, how are you gonna uh, do that? In, in this, yeah, I think that. Right now, worry well, about getting the platform, on and then. Okay, tell about tell us about the workflow. Okay, no, he, he, here here's the thing. You plane them and you put them in place. Once people start going up them, they will immediately get dirty and 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 messed up. So, so uh, they need to be covered, and then later on. Well, the staining here's the deal. The staining is an issue. Is like it, it's gonna. Uh, the issue with the staining and the painting is the edges, where it meets a material that is of a different color. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, so what do we do? We gotta paint it, stain it before we mount it. Is that the proper workflow? Right, but then you're also gonna have like you're gonna have to paint those walls too. Um, okay, the way you address that, that's what we need to do. Is that's why you have a baseboard so that you hide whatever that seam is. You have to have a little something there, like a little piece of trim. It could be molding, for example. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know if you ended up deciding to do a channel, but if that channel projects over, yeah, you know what I'm saying? If that channel, it, the electric hide. channel projects over the deck, that will hide the seams as well. So that will address that problem. When we make this today, what's our final step? If, if we get to making the deck, What's our final step on the deck prior to installation? Well, that's what we're talking about. Like, I mean, if it if it can be stained in advance, that's just easier because then we don't have to deal with the edges. I so think that that's what I would do. We can do. make the frame. We can plane it. We can stain it, and that's when we would make the attach attach it. But this platform looks movable to me, so we can work on that. And uh, fit into place later, or fit it into place first, and then I think we got to stain before we install, right? No. I think it would be, I, I would recommend it, yeah, you, you know, you can't varnish it, you, so you, you stain it, but you still have to protect it, because until the wood is varnished, it's like paper, it's going to absorb every single stain, it just, it will get deep into the wood, it's not washable. The stain helps a little bit in the sense that it creates a layer of oil at the top of the wood that somewhat, you know, um, rejects water. So it will help a little bit, but it still needs to be protected until it's stuff? varnished. When does that happen? What's varnish? When does that? What did you happen? say? When does the varnish? Well, I mean, varnish varnish requires a completely clean environment, like no hair, no dust, anything that is floating around in the air is gonna settle in the varnish and congeal there. So usually, like I just do it by myself. I clean the house very thoroughly, so it's a very last thing. I wear a hairnet and booties over my shoes and gloves so that there's like minimum dust and hairs and things. So it's kind of like it's a clean room operation. When does that happen? Not today. It's, uh, right, uh, no, I mean, that is usually the very last thing I do in a house before bringing in furniture. It's very like the last thing. thing. But until that point when it's stained, so you, what do you do? You put some uh, protection on, put a board on. Yeah, it you know, like house wrap or something. You got to Well, a board is gonna scratch it. I mean, oh, you can put a wrap. house, uh, yeah, house wrap followed by a board or something. So if we're still yeah. under construction above, like, is that 
what we do right now or is it going to get all scratched up with even with things like the house wrap on it what are you talking about i'm sorry i missed the first part of that sentence because people are going to be moving up and down and we're still under construction so is this the time to to install the right. deck at all or wait after you plane it yeah I mean, one way, here. one thing you, yeah, you, you may not want to put it right now. That's true. You may want to build it and put it aside, not put it in use. If people don't mind that big step, though, we would have to or maybe make a temporary step and then just bring, that would be the safest approach. It just build it, put it aside, just bring it in um, once the house is finished. Yeah, and at that point, it could even be stained. You could even varnish it off-site and just bring it in, like just ready to pop in. And yeah. that way, that gives you another advantage. Like it, it's going to make it easier to paint those walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably probably the way to do it. So keep it modular because yeah. all the electrical is running on top of it. We're, we don't have anything inside of it. It's just this module that slides in. Um, once you slide it in, you trim it up. Yeah, we could. Okay, so there's a. That thing can be. So, but how do we get the right dimensions without putting it in place? We kind of measure it in place, measure everything in place. And oh, then you can. I mean, you, and you, you do a dry run, right? You can do a dry run. Yeah. You can test it and then you take it off. Yeah. If, if Still that's. The yeah. Build it up, dry run. But yeah, then, then we gotta. Can't really step on it too much. I mean, it's like final pretty trim looking thing because um, the treads yeah. we're still going to take off and and sand them and stain them and varnish them so that's all it's all yeah. kind of like well that's another possibility is you build it you don't plane anything you just build it as is you stick it in there and then when the time comes that's when we plane all take off all the boards again the one by four and we plane them and stain them and is That's that another way to go about it. Is that it. effective or does that waste a lot of time? Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not particularly effective, no. Uh, uh, it's only like a matter of like, yeah, I guess it doesn't make sense, no. Yeah, so, so, yeah, you you do need to put the temporary off. step there so people can use the stairs. We do need to put something there temporarily. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just do mm -hmm. that. Okay, so the deck kind of gets landing deck we can't cut and measure it yeah. and start finishing it but we can't really use it until the very end right do we want to just plane like full boards or <laughs> does it matter plane since half of well, them are planing planing full boards without the roller is I guess I mean I have it you know I do it it's tiring with one person with two people it might be easier because I don't have supports in front or behind the planer so I have to hold the boards as it go in and then run to the other side and pick them up as they come out just because I don't have the rollers but it can definitely be done it's a little more I worry a little bit about the planer because the higher the board is if it's at the the longer the board is if it's at the wrong angle it could kind of like break the blade or something um, so you have to be, the longer the board is, the more careful you have to be about it, about not damaging the machine. I'm asking about cutting this to size and planing two-thirds since the rest is under the stairs. But under the stairs is still visible from oh, the closet, so... Yeah, yeah I mean, once I you put it through the planer, like, why would you just plane two-thirds? Just oh, do yeah, the whole thing. you can take it out, right. Right. I mean, that would make sense if you're planing by hand, which I also have a manual planer. I mean, select but it's handheld I mean not manual handheld mm -hmm. but I it's it's difficult to use right. you have to know what you're doing the the thick and this is what we want to use here yeah yeah so basically we're saying that the deck gets made but installed later uh, mm -hmm. and finished off late uh, finish <coughs> including planing but finish of
something like that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there's deck, deck work and the corner work there. Putting a little electrical box. Oh, we got plenty to do. So let's um, let's see where we get on this. However far we get, we at least started, and then let's reconvene probably like one. Cameras up. Deconstruction time. Okay. And hopefully some more people join us. Yeah, every thirty TA is too far. Okay. Yeah, we can start. Well, um, what I wanted to do on a, let's keep, let's actually keep count of stuff like, okay, this is how many, like, we'll have a bucket, like, say for, like, the deck. Okay, this is, you know, put it in a, in a bucket. I might even take out that little scale and actually take data. Okay, this is how many yeah. screws we used and, and how long it took. We, everything's getting caught on video, so all the timing is already captured, but then, um, yeah, like per floor, okay, we'll have a bucket out there. Here's all the screws. We, in fact, we might even just say, okay, let's uh, reuse these screws. Um, so we'll set up a bunch of buckets like, like these things. So we just put them all in there. So people don't have them like all in their tool belts and then they uh, kind of get all mixed up. We can actually keep track of it and then we can get a pretty accurate materials bill from that kind of stuff. So that'll be useful to do as well. Let's do that. Um, house wrap, are we preserving that? Yeah, we should roll it up. Just um, fold it up, or maybe like fold it and then roll it. Yeah. Fold so it. it's, yeah. How do we get um, staples? Uh, you kind of rip it, rip it off. I mean, uh, you can't really. It's too much work to, otherwise. But it kind of breaks off pretty relatively cleanly. So I think we should be able to get them out. Okay. Uh, sometimes the staples just come right out too. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah let's right. do this nice experiment that we want. Definitely before we take off the upper decking or the roof, we should take off that first house wrap. Yeah, yeah, uh, house wrap. We need somebody laying on the top. And maybe somebody on the ladder below. I don't know how easy it comes off. But maybe you can have a person start in each of the corners and move towards the center, and then they can just pull it off and fold it on the roof. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, yeah. I guess probably you could drop it. But you could drop it, or you can probably drop it because we'll have some of it too much stuff going on on the roof so yeah drop it it's a trip hazard too so uh, just drop it. but yeah I think we should be able to pull it just pretty much pull it off from the roof and then keep working from that okay. uh, so part of it is we got the carport too so we can maybe start I don't know what we can do on the carport but that's the structure we can use yeah. to help yeah you know, the carport might be nice for um, Nice to leave up until we get the wall, the second story of wall modules down because it offers a oh, yeah. little bit more space. Yes, yes, we want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So house wrap, top floor, top plate, walls. Oh yeah, but remember that when we we do have to take probably a. A little precaution. We, sh we should probably put in like a support post or two for the walls, like after yes. we take off the yeah, top plates, because yeah, yeah. th those are going to be quite flexible, quite flimsy. So put in a few supports. We don't have to do too many because we're like doing it right now and there's no wind. Uh, but if there was like heavy wind, we definitely want to like brace the second story walls quite a bit. Um, yeah, but put in a couple of braces, bring a few two by fours up there as well. Um, yeah. All right. Leave it at that. 